Hey guys, this is Courtney from Cosmic Clarity Astrology and I'm here today to talk to you about the Virgo new moon happening on September 7th at 11 degrees of Virgo. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Don't forget to watch for your sun and rising sign and maybe even your moon sign if you're looking for a more internal emotional perspective, but don't skip the overview because it's always super important for the context of your reading. If you do want to watch those signs, those will be linked in the description box down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so this Virgo new moon is happening, like I said, at 11 degrees, and it is opposite Saturn in Pisces. So what does this all mean? First of all, Virgo, which is where this new moon is, has a lot to deal with our planning, our preparation, our hard work, our discipline, our dedication to something. It is a sign that is concerned with usefulness, efficiency, being of service or being a part of a team, and again, being useful to that team. It is very concerned with health and cleanliness. So you might find that you want to kind of go through and get rid of some things at this time, eat healthier, focus more on your appearance. Those are all topics that can come up along with in general wanting to improve our lives, improve ourselves, improve our work, kind of make make moves basically. And this could look like having a better plan for your day, going to bed on time, eating different foods, investing more of your energy into something that you think is going to enhance your life and move it forward um, in the ways that you desire. With Saturn opposite this new moon, it's presenting a little bit of a challenge. Saturn in general has to deal with responsibility or something that we have to overcome in order to get to the other side of something. So this could look like you wanting to improve your life in some way, but you have a hurdle or obstacle that you have to confront first in order to make that improvement. Or whatever you want to improve requires some level of sacrifice or costs you something. This could be a financial cost, especially because Venus is in Libra, conjunct the South Node in Libra. Many of us might find that we spend money during this cycle of time, um, the, these few weeks. So that is a potential as well. But in Saturn, with Saturn in general, there's something that, again, we have to put effort into to surpass in order to get to the other side. So in order to fully improve ourselves, dedicate ourselves to something, maybe work on our health or work on our actual work. There is something, again, that we have to commit ourselves to, have patience with, sacrifice for, spend money for, um, or, again, just overcome in general to get to the other side of what we want. Saturn can represent some level of delay or procrastination. So this could be self-inflicted, which would be procrastination or delay where we have to kind of wait for something. So it's like, I have to wait for approval or I have to, I have to like save up enough money or sign up for this thing that only starts at this time. So there's a sense of things outside of you that are boxes you have to tick in society or things that you have to do in order to accomplish a goal. Um, those can, can feel like they're slowing you down a little bit. But again, that can also come from within. And so what I think this new moon is trying to get us to do is it's trying to help us get really clear around what some of those obstacles are, especially because I think that there is a part of us that is a little bit like idealistic with Mars making a square to Neptune. Mars is a, our planet of action and Neptune is a planet of delusion. So when we combine these in a tense conflict, what we see is somebody who is kind of spurred by maybe like a fanaticism or spurred by a dream and an ideal to act in a, in a, in a way that may be at times um, ungrounded or reckless to some degree, not fully considering the problems that can come up or the length and duration that something can take, which again, with this new moon opposite Saturn, very likely indicates that what we want to accomplish right now is going to take longer than we think it's going to. And so I feel like there's some kind of 
warning here with that because with this Mars square Neptune, we can kind of overlook the day-to-day -day struggles and how long this is going to feel in, in the bigger scope of this. So yeah, Mars square Neptune, it just can be this kind of idealistic desire nature that we're driven by. Let's say this is bringing up relationship stuff for you. If you're a Pisces rising, for example, you could read into something and think like, oh, this is my person or I'm going to get married on this timeline. But in reality, it's going to be delayed. It's not that person or it's going to take longer or something is going to have to be worked through in order for that to be a practical reality. So keep that in mind because Mars is in Gemini in an exact square to Neptune. And one of the things that can happen, especially with this, is that we can take on too much. Mars in Gemini, we can become really scattered. We can lose our perspective of how long things take. And again, with that, with this new moon opposite Saturn, things are likely going to take longer than we even think normally. So if we're starting to take on too much, we might not realize that, um, yeah, that we can't accomplish everything that we want to. So I think that's important to keep in mind. We do still have the Jupiter square to Saturn. So if you haven't watched that video, definitely make sure you check that out. But there is still this kind of battle here between these two energies of you know, growth and in some ways, like our dreams or where we're wanting to, to head to our vision for our life with the material reality and the difficulties that lie within material reality and life in general on earth. And so again, we're having to kind of reconstruct what we believe, where we're going, what our timeline is, what we need to, who we need to become to get there. Um, so that's kind of the backdrop of this new moon. And of, again, a part of a very important long-term cycle. So if you haven't watched that video, definitely make sure you check that out. Um, it'll be the video before this one, Jupiter square Saturn. So one of the things that's interesting about this new moon, and I've already seen this come to pass today, which I'm filming this on August 30th, is that Mercury is in Leo squaring Uranus and Taurus. So Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, which means it's the planet that's in charge of this new moon. And so it carries a really strong weight and influence in how the events unfold at this new moon. With Mercury and Leo square Uranus, there's something that's like fanfare, going out with a bang, something unexpected, something that is bold, that shines brightly, that comes out of nowhere and impacts you in a way that may feel positive, may not feel positive. It kind of depends on what's going on in your life and the transits happening. But in general, there is this dynamic, chaotic quality to Mercury square Uranus that can make things when paired, especially with Mars in Gemini squaring Neptune, it, it can create this kind of risky, um, head first type of energy around it or wanting to rush in or make a really quick last minute decision because you're really idealizing something. Um, so there's maybe that energy as a part of this new moon, but then there's also this energy opposite Saturn that slows us down and makes us plan, makes us think long term, maybe even makes us doubt ourselves a little bit. So there's this weird combination of like, I want to jump in head first into something. I don't want to think about it. And then this other energy that's that's really slow and really cautious, maybe overly so. So we're going to be kind of contending with all of those mix, mi all of those kind of contrasting emotions, basically. And ultimately, I think it's about finding a healthy combination of all of this and slowing down enough that we can have a plan and execute it wisely but then also really listening to our heart and understanding that we're, we, don't, we don't always have all the answers. We don't always feel ready. We don't always have like a specific moment in time where it's the right time. So I think it's really about both where you are not taking an unnecessary risk and being impulsive, but you're also not getting so slowed down that you're not taking the necessary leap forward, there's always some leap 
in this process of starting something new. And that's what a new moon is about. So there's some way that you're meant to improve your life that if you're still, you know, watching YouTube videos about or researching about it and you are, um, you've been thinking about it for a year or two years and you're saying, oh, I'm going to start at this time. I'll start at this time. And then it always moves back. This is, this new moon is your time to say enough is enough with that. I'm going to actually become discipline and make that necessary sacrifice and kind of work towards that that ideal mindset or that ideal vision that you have with Mars square Neptune um, taking steps towards your ideal self and that's going to look really different for everybody for some of you guys you might be driven by vanity purposes because Venus is with the south node in Libra so maybe some of you want to look a certain way maybe some of you want to um attract a partner like what is your bigger long-term goal with this um and i think that yeah i think that we can be driven by what we think is that big goal or that gift that will get along with the goal if that makes sense like if you want to have a successful career why do you want that like what do you want along with that that is i think really enticing to us at this time with this mars square neptune where we can have this kind of devotion towards this thing that we can imagine that feels really emotionally exciting, mentally exciting for us. With Venus conjunct the South Node in Libra, I do think anytime a planet conjuncts the South Node, many things can happen. One of them being that things from the past can come up. That's even more the case because this new moon is opposite Saturn. Saturn is a god of time and often brings up things from the past. So there's something that could come up here and it doesn't have to be in one specific area because we're kind of pulling in different pieces. But for many of us, if, it, if we're narrowing it down, there could be some stuff around Venusian topics like relationships, self-worth, appearance, money, self-love, where our values, where we're kind of assessing like, what do I really value? This situation is coming up from the past in a way that can um, just have you kind of at a turning point almost where I'm trying to move forward. This is a new moon. There's something I'm trying to improve in my life. But with this Venus South node, I need to release something related to this past event in order for this to be possible. So if you are really... If there's, especially when it comes to like people pleasing, if there's some kind of tendency here around, you know, giving into what other people want and what they think is best for you, or um, if there is a situation that just involved other people, I can really see that coming back up to be let go of or to be moved past in some kind of way release so that you can move into calmer waters. So if there was any kind of complication around relationships or how someone played a role in this goal or in this improvement of your life or whatever it is, if someone else plays a role in it, I can see you healing that or letting go of that or addressing that again or something coming back up with that, so, but in a new light, in a new way that allows you to move on from it. So let's say for example this is about like someone from your past coming up or like an ex or something like that i could see this coming back up to be released and let go of so that you can move on with your own kind of I ideal version of what a, a new relationship should be for you so i hope that's making sense because i know that there's a lot of disparate elements here that will really vary a lot depending on each individual's con like life context. So hopefully that can relate to something for you. If it does, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Venus conjunct South Node and Libra, what do you feel like you are releasing at this time? This could be, again, also something in regards to your own relationship with your appearance, with your values, with how you create balance in your life. There can be themes that come up that have you address those things in your life um, and ask you again to look at it through new eyes and let something go that you were kind of attached to in, in regards to that. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to what this is gonna look like 
look like for all of the rising and sun signs. If that resonates with you or if you enjoy anything, please don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and comment down below. Okay, thanks guys. All right, at first we have Aries rising and sun. So I wanted to give a quick disclaimer that I am seeing a particular message here that is not going to be for everybody. So if this doesn't resonate, don't worry because I have a lot more messages to come. But let me first say that this is a new moon in the sixth house. So this is very pertinent in relationship to one's body, one's health, as well as your kind of work and your daily life and routine around your work and responsibilities. So before I go much further into that, the ruler of this new moon is Mercury, which is in your fifth house in the sign of Leo. The fifth house is related to children and pregnancy and the sixth house where the new moon is, is related to changes of the body and health. I also pulled the sun and the page of cups, which are two cards that can also relate to pregnancy. Some of you guys, this will not resonate with, but some of you guys maybe need a confirmation that you are potentially going to have a pregnancy. If that is the case for you, because Mercury is squaring Uranus, maybe for some of you out there, this is a little bit of a surprise or happen sooner than you thought or is going to impact you financially in a way that is unexpected. There's something here in regards to it being like a little bit shocking um, or unexpected or, or not fully planned for in a way. So that is a message for some of you. Okay, for the rest of you, having a new moon in the sixth house again can indicate some kind of new beginning that's meant to be happening within the area of your physical body, which could be your pregnancy, or within your work and your kind of day-to-day -day life and routines around your work. With Saturn opposite this new moon in the sixth house, to me, this does bring up some stuff around like mental health sometimes, energy levels, um, Saturn sometimes moving through the 12th can indicate that we get sick a little bit more or that we have a greater need for alone time or kind of like recharging. Maybe we need more physical support. And so one of the messages here for you guys is that this is a new moon meant to increase your vitality. But with Saturn in the 12th, you may have to like end some things or you might have to confront some things in your life that are taking away your vitality in order to come at life with renewed vigor. Um, if you're starting a new job, there could be elements here of that with Saturn the 12th where you maybe feel a little bit of doubt around this new opportunity or you maybe lack some clarity or you feel like you're not good enough or not fully accepted where you're at and having trouble with coworkers. There's a sense here of like, I'm trying to improve my health or I'm trying to, you know, work at this new job or improve my work in some kind of way. But then I'm also feeling like a little bit restricted for whatever reason, maybe because of outside influence, maybe because I don't have as much energy as I normally do. Maybe I, there's just some situation in which I feel just like some kind of depletion or isolation. That's kind of the general energy of, of Saturn as well as maybe feeling like there's additional responsibilities and things that are making it hard to manage what you have right in front of you. So there is this kind of energy with Saturn where those things need to be dealt with and addressed. Otherwise, they kind of build up long term. And especially because Saturn transiting your 12th, it's going to be there for a second. So you are you may need to have extra support to be able to have maybe some more time alone or to eat better foods basically that can support you physically or whatever that looks like. With Mercury in the fifth, squaring Uranus in the second, there's something that you may have an idea about that you're really excited about, especially with the Sun and Page of Cups. This is like a very creative type of energy. Um, this is somebody who is maybe really excited about something. This could be really simple, everyday stuff, like I can't wait to go on that vacation next week, um, to I can't wait to you know, go on that date with my partner, go on a date for the first time, or whatever this is, or I wanna create something physical in my, in my life that I've always wanted to do. So um, Mercury, Leo in the fifth house is a lot of that 
inspired energy. And with it squaring Uranus in the second, there is that potential for this to be a little bit like of a financially reckless time. Um, you know, Mercury in the fifth has a little bit of this kind of like, I want this and I want it now. And I'm like super excited about this thing. Um, Mercury is already really curious. So wherever you place it, whatever house you place it, you know it's going to go and explore. And then on top of that, with this squaring, you know, Uranus in the second house, that could cost money. That exploration, that curiosity could require some kind of financial um, decision, basically. Um, so I'm just, I just pulled some cards. I'm just looking at them. Okay. Um, you guys also have Mars in Gemini in your third house, squaring Neptune in the second, tw sorry, 12th. So Mars is a super important planet for you. It's your planetary ruler. So being in Gemini, you guys might already feel like a little bit more scattered. That with Mercury also in the square with Uranus, it feels a little bit like ADHD type of energy. So you might not be ADHD, but you might have life situations that pull you in so many different directions that make you feel like that. And this divine wisdom card, I feel like this is, your brain is like working overtime. And I really just see with the square to Neptune that you're getting messages through your dreams. You're having really strong imagination. You might be really, really busy and you're kind of like burning the candlestick at both ends. I seeing just somebody who's very stimulated, maybe even anxious, but almost like I can't pinpoint the anxiety. Like where is this coming from? And it's probably because you're too busy, but there's something here with this kind of this divine wisdom card where I feel like you know, Jupiter being in your third, also squaring Saturn in the 12th. There's something I think that's trying to ground you a little bit, um, giving you maybe some more wisdom and perspective from beyond the veil, which Neptune in the 12th is really good at. So I don't know, I feel like you're getting these downloads and that might be why you're so like, I feel like high strong or like, yeah, just having a lot of, again, a lot going on, a lot of stimulation but it's almost like a really fast frequency and then you're eight, and then there are messages or things that are trying to come into your life and so that might be actually what's happening in the background that's creating so much energy i hope that makes sense it's almost like if you're if you have if we're normally kind of just in the world we're listening to one radio frequency, but then spirit's trying to talk to you on another radio frequency and you have multiple frequencies going on at once. It could be very stimulating, but you're receiving messages from both planes of existence. Um, so I think that you are, again, receiving some wisdom right now. And I think if you can really, if you can somehow like free write or talk about this, it's, it, there is this channeling vibe that I think you'll get a lot out of. Because with, again, with this, the ruler of this moon, Mercury squaring Uranus, this is our time to be thinking outside of the box in some kind of way in our life. If you are, you know, more tired, more lethargic, there might be something that you can do in your, in your life that's, that you haven't considered before that will open you up to more energy or a better kind of schedule or routine or whatever, like the solution can come through an unconventional, unexpected place. And I think that if you allow yourself to channel, however you do that, if it's talking to a friend on the phone, going for a walk and thinking about something, writing in your journal, free, free flow. What, what is that? Free writing? Um, I think something will come to you that'll be really helpful for you, especially with Jupiter there as well. You guys also have Venus conjunct South Node and Libra in the seventh house. So there can be something going on in terms of relationships where the dynamic is needing to shift. So, you know, Venus with the South Node, if you watch the overview, you know that this brings up something from the past. So there can be just something from the past that comes up in relationships that it's like, I need to let go of that. I need to focus on the future. I need to have compassion for myself. That's super important because that's something I've immediately saw with Virgo 
in the sixth opposite Saturn and 12th, there's something going on mental health where it could be a little bit more hard on ourselves or we could be under a little bit more stress physically, financially, mentally, you know, job wise. There's something going on here where there's a little bit more pressure and stress. I think, again, this compassion card is super key here of like, let's just, let's just let that go. Or let's not focus on that so much. Or let's ask for support. There's something here where it's like, I don't want to just sit in that difficulty. I want to have compassion for myself over the situation. If I'm tired and I don't have the energy for it, I'm going to have compassion. Be like, I just can't do that today. Um, the future, again, is just really focusing on the future, especially because this new moon can definitely bring up stuff from the past with Saturn opposite the moon, as well as Venus in the south node in the seventh house. There could be some stuff relationally that comes up or emotions that come up through talking to others um, or something that involves maybe an old business that you worked with, an old contract, an old coworker. There's something here where it's like something could resurface and it, it's best to just look forward. How is this, how is this coming up to bring up things that I need to adjust so that when I move forward with similar situations, I will act differently or I just won't have that same thing happen again because uh, I put that to rest basically. So anyway, I feel like there are a lot of messages in this new moon um, and they're not all exactly connected. I think they, that they're interwoven, but I think there is a lot going on that are complexities in our life right now. So I hope this resonates with you and makes sense. If it does, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want a reading from me, check me out at cosmicclarityastrology.com. I will see you guys luego. Bye. All right. I'm nice to have Taurus rising and sun. So this Virgo new moon that's happening for you is that's happening on September 2nd is in your fifth house. And it's opposite Saturn in the 11th. I am getting so much stuff around pregnancy. I don't know why, but again, quick side note for who this applies to. If some of you, you know, had a miscarriage, um, then I could see that around the energy of this new moon. Um, and I'm really sorry if that is the case, the this really feels like a time of of transition where you're trying to come back home to yourself. Um, and so that is, I think, the a message for some of you. And for some reason, this, if that is the case for you, this loss is about helping you go back to yourself. And yeah, okay. Moving on from that, um, with this new moon being in the fifth house, there is needing to be some kind of new spark within you, a new spark of joy, you know, life, where if you're trying for that, um, creativity, connection with another person, that's what the new moon is trying to bring you. It's trying to reignite that inner flame. But with it opposite Saturn in the 11th house, there can be some relational aspects that make that challenging or there can be just things going on in your environment or out in the world that really dims your light to some degree, or there could be such big goals that you have, such big dreams that you have, that you're trying hard to contend with the reality of the work that that takes with that initial spark that you have and how to make those two combine into passionate progress. So, Whatever this is for you, hopefully it kind of fits into something along those lines. Whatever this is for you, it's trying to, again, bring something back online or, again, reignite some flame within you. The ruler of this moon, Mercury, is in the fourth house of home and family. And I did pull this home card. So it feels very relevant to have something coming up around family members or around the place that you live, around the physical environment. Um, again, if this was related to children, of course, that makes a lot of sense because of the whole energy of family and nesting. So there's something here in regards to your place of living, your origins, your family, where you come from and how they affect you, your past, 
all of those things and even your emotions as well like how how you are deep inside and what you feel about things all of those things right now are getting riled up because Mercury is squaring Uranus in Taurus in your first house. So there's some element here of needing to create some kind of change. And this in-between card came first. So there's something about your home life that is trying to get you out of stagnation. So that could look like, you know, decluttering. That could look like changing the environment somehow, painting a wall, moving out, moving someone else in, doing something to get rid of like the cobwebs of your emotions, of your past, of the environment, the aesthetic, the influence of your family. There's something where it's like, let's get rid of all of that noise or that clutter and create this kind of serenity. But with the squaring Uranus in the first, you are going to have to be willing to take that step forward. You're going to have to be willing to maybe do that before you're ready, when you're in this weird limbo place, when you're uncertain of how it's going to play out. It's like, I need to make a change. I need to make a leap. I need to trust. And this could feel scary because Uranus and Taurus is about making these kinds of leaps that do change us fundamentally as people, that do alter our future. So yeah, there's some kind of like, I need to get out of my comfort zone, but also shake up my like home life in a way that feels like I have this kind of fresh start. And I think that will help light the flame for you that may be like dimmer right now because of the things that I mentioned earlier. It's almost like trying to make a change in another area of life will somehow free up energy to pour into the one that you need that flame for. Hope that makes sense. Um, trying to say if I want to talk about tarot or the astrology first. Let's talk about astrology. You have Mars in your second house squaring Neptune in 11th. This is really not the time to make speculative investments, financial investments. This is really not the time. If you are trying to make some kind of shakeup in your life that involves a big financial decision, really not the time. And I say that because Mars squaring Neptune, there can be a lot of hidden pieces of information that will come to light later that you will feel like you were disappointed in the outcome because you didn't see that at first. So know that this is not the, the time of the utmost clarity. <laughs> when it comes to finances in particular. Mars in the second square in the 11th though is a good time to be in our phase of what's a, what's a different way, like what's a different way I could make money? Um, yeah, it's almost like let's create the vision for a stable financial future for ourselves. Let's create the vision for what is what it is that we really value that we want to build up or maintain in our life. We don't want to take risks in order to get there right now, but we can really tap into the imagination and this kind of creative thinking in order to accomplish something that is more easily accomplished outside of linear thinking. And a Virgo new moon offers linear thinking, but with Mercury squaring Uranus and then Mars and Gemini squaring Neptune, this offers very creative, outside of the box, imaginative, imaginary thinking. So it offers a little bit of both, which I think is really nice. But again, it's not the time to take a risk on that. You can still make a plan with that in mind. Um, you also have Venus and South Node and Libra in your sixth house. So there's something here, wherever Venus and South Node are together, there's something that we kind of need to let go of. And this is going to be a lot around relationships for everybody because it is in, in Libra. But this is also following in your sixth house. So there might be something around like work relationships that needs to be processed or let go of. So this could be with, you know, colleagues. This could be with... Um, bosses this could be with clients 
but there's something here or just like people that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis let's say you're not working people that you interact with in order to accomplish things in your life there can be some issue that comes up that feels like it's a repetition of something from the past um and it's coming up to just like i'm this this is ending right i'm done with this in the way that it is and i pulled a judgment card in the ace of cups in reverse for you so the judgment card is this time of of evaluation of something um and that's really what i feel like a virgo energy is about it's like how we're a virgo one of the main words for it is discernment and dis discrimination as well of looking at information and discerning and discriminating what fits and what doesn't what is the best way to go what's the right plan um kind of like sorting sorting is probably a, a really good word for that so there's this sense of i'm able to look at these qualities of myself or my life and i'm able to kind of sort through them put them into the pile of this is working or this connects to this and this works well as a system over here but this doesn't this is creating a bottleneck or this is the thing that's blocking me from achieving something and so there's a sense of understanding how things work together and how to sort them and move them around or make changes to improve to create efficiency to create flow and this judgment card creates is is a part of that first step where we're scrutinizing where we're evaluating ourselves and we're kind of looking at um and maybe judging to some extent or others doesn't just have to be yourself we're but we're looking at something in our life or about ourselves or about someone that we're with and we're kind of making these assessments assessment calls and with the ace of cups in reverse this also it feels like this could bring up um just like some sad things basically um and i think this has to do with saturn being in the 11th where we're we're doing this evaluation process and we see where certain things haven't lived up to the hope that they would or we're having a particular strain in our life that's that's sad so there's this almost like i'm evaluating everything but in that process i'm also having to make peace with and release the emotions around the disappointment of things not being where i would want them to be in my life at this stage or with this person or with this thing or with this level of success or with this event whatever it is but it's like it's like not living up to the the expectation that i would have so and that then you can feel like you're in that in between state where you're you have some stuff that's going but you have some other stuff that's not going and it's just one foot in two worlds and i really feel like this new moon is about igniting that fire letting go of some of these things maybe in certain ways of the disappointment um and making some necessary changes in order to restoke your fire completely feel more at home in yourself and at your in your skin and be able to move forward basically i feel like this whole message is really about it's time for you to move forward it's time for you to move forward and make peace with the past um and so i hope that makes sense for you guys reignite that flame by letting something go so if that does resonate with you or even if it doesn't i would love to hear from you in the comments down below please feel free to share any messages about you know your chart or how this relates to you i love to read kind of the situations that people are going through because that always helps me as well please don't forget to like this video subscribe if you want an astrology reading you can check me out at cosmicclarityastrology.com so there's two c's in the cosmic and the clarity Hopefully that makes sense. I'll link that down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye. All right. Up next we have Gemini rising and sun. So for you guys, this Virgo new moon happening on September 2nd is taking place in your fourth house. And this is a time in which I feel like we're all trying to kind of get our ish together, especially because this new moon is opposite Saturn, which is a planet that applies pressure and Saturn being in your 10th house, there's a lot of pressure to figure out your future, figure out your career, your plans, 
your structure for your life, your routines. Um, and with this new moon being in the fourth house, ultimately it is something that's supposed to help you kind of like make sure that you get, that you create, that you get a sense of security with where you are at in your life, but also that you're not inhibited by a security blanket. So we're going to get into what I mean by that. But in general, this is a time not to, I guess what I, I guess what I wanted to say there, I, sorry, I'm struggling to talk today, was that with Jupiter in your first house in Gemini, this is a social time. You do have four swords reverse. This is a time about needing to meet people, needing to put yourself out there. If you've been in kind of a more cloistered environment, um, this is a time to get out into the world a little bit more. But usually that's not what you think about with a new moon in the fourth house. This is a little bit more of the behind the scenes element here. But I think what it's trying to say is that you're needing to create a greater sense of security in your life emotionally. And that also means that it is giving you the strength to kind of get outside of your comfort zone um, and put yourself out into a new situation. Because I do feel like there's something uncomfortable happening here at this new moon. Mercury is in your third, squaring Uranus in the 12th. So a few things can come up with this. You might have to have a difficult conversation with somebody or address something that has been unaddressed in your life. You might have to face something head on that you've been kind of pushing away into your subconscious and you might have to become aware of it and make necessary changes in regards to that. You might need to address with this King of Swords in reverse where you have been like lacking progress or discipline or the necessary structure or if there's been something that you have been like not using sound judgment with or not being clear in your communication with or not addressing something that needs to be addressed. Those are all things that can come up at the time of this new moon. And so it could come up unexpectedly, it could come up out of nowhere, or it could resurface again from the past. Um, and it's like, in order for me to feel really secure with where I'm at, I have to address that issue, that thing that is unaddressed with this person that I'd never talked to about. Or I have to make a, a big decision and I, I need to move forward with this decision. Or, um, I need to address the fact that I'm scared about this and I'm sabotaging myself and that's why I'm not moving forward. There's something here where it's like there's, yeah, there's subconscious elements or hidden elements at play that are kind of preventing you from fully taking steps forward and that's what I think is needing to be addressed and I think it's unconscious or it's been pushed down or it's been not addressed because it's inherently uncomfortable. So it's like, I'm going to face what is uncomfortable about this so that I can move forward. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Um, with the five of swords, there could be some element of tension here. The five of swords does typically indicate some level of either stress internally where we feel like we are having to make difficult decisions, um, or it could be that we have to stand up for ourselves in a situation where we feel like we are being bullied or not heard or there's strife with somebody. Um, general, like, hostility is possible. And with Mars squaring Neptune, Mars in your first squaring Neptune in the 10th, this could come in especially through, like, authority figures. And there could be confusion around it. So somebody is... Yeah, so like, let's say you're having an issue with your boss. It's like, I have to address this, but there's, it's maybe not clear, like we're not communicating clearly or the actions that were done made things ambiguous. There's something here where things could be a disconcerting, uncomfortable, but also not super clear. And it's like, okay, we have to clear this up. But this could also be internal where you have a lot of ideas or different directions you want to go in, or you you feel conflicted, or you're not sure, or you're lacking confidence in something. Um, Mars square Neptune is super common with lacking confidence, especially in yourself, because Mars is in your first house. So you might really start to feel like that 
drive that Mars has becomes more passive through Neptune's influence and confusion where you start to get all like in your head about something. So um, that could be the self-sabotage that can come with this card. So there, there can be a lot of things. I, again, I feel like this is such a complex new moon because I just can see this playing out in so many different ways for people. But the energy with the Four of Swords in, in reverse is saying that it's trying to still push you to take action, to move forward in a new direction. Jupiter's in your first squaring Saturn in the 10th. This is a time to really get out of your bubble, you know, and like fortify yourself, create that sense of inner strength, inner security, inner resolve, clear things up emotionally so that you can get out into the world and meet these challenges that you might be facing or progress in your life in some way, make bigger plans for your future. And yeah, so that's kind of the general, just I'm seeing, um, four of swords in reverse can also indicate a lack of self care. And that is something that you can establish at this new moon with being in the fourth house is what do I need to do to ensure that I feel good? And a part of that security is taking care of yourself, making sure that you have time for vacation or for a rest or for exercise or for relationships or to address the uncomfortable thing or uh, eat the frog, as I say, when you do the most difficult task at the start of your day. So it's like, let's get this thing done so that I can feel balanced and whole and safe in the rest of my life. Um, you guys also have Venus and the South Node together in Libra in your fifth house. Some some stuff can come up relationally from your past. This is kind of a recurring theme for a lot of people. Um, and there could be some stuff also around like indulging. Libra is not the best at holding back from what it wants. Neither is Venus, neither is the fifth house. And so there could be some themes that come up around um yeah, just like how we indulge in something. That feels like a separate message. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now. But this is your message, my Geminis. Um, actually, now that I said that, I feel conflicted. So let me pull a card. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. I kind of want to say a little bit more. Um, but also in relationships, stuff can come up with people where you are kind of like asking yourself like what do i really want what do i really want what do i really value and something from the past is coming back up to ask you that so like let's say an ex pops back up into your life um, for a conversation and then it kind of has you assessing like what you're looking for in your next relationship um, that's kind of like a most obvious example the small intestine let's see what this is or like a situation that you had a different timeline for can suddenly progress in a way um, where you thought something was over or you thought you were, yeah, you thought something was over, but it comes back up or it moves very quickly uh, in a way. And then you have to kind of reassess, like, do I value this or do I want to approach this the same way? Okay. The small intestine, judgment, discernment, and ambivalence. Our judgment is heavily influenced by ego. Judgment can lead us to believe that what we are in that we are in a position of power and that one person or thing is morally better than another. Discernment is determining what is or is not appropriate for ourselves and others through deeper insight rather than making a decision influenced by opinions, bias, or social pressure. Ooh, yes. Definitely a lot of you guys with Mercury being your ruler and in the fifth house, or sorry, third house, and squaring Uranus, this is a time where you, we need to make some kind of decision or have an important conversation or both. And with the Venus in the South and Libra, there's a message here around not letting others influence you too much or like taking them into account, but not letting them sway you or people pleasing towards what they want you to do. Um, or the opposite where we are judging and having ego come into play in that conversation. So there's, there's definitely stuff in relationships that are going to come up again, resurfacing for you to address and how we approach that really matters. So we need to come from a very kind of centered place. Um, 
and not go into the ego or people pleasing tendencies. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. If that makes sense, please let me know in the comments down below. If it resonates, I'd love to hear your story. If you want a reading, you can get one from me at cosmicclarityastrology.com, which I will link in the description box down below along with the other signs. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and have a beautiful day. Bye. All right, I'm gonna see if Cancer, Rising or Sun. So for you guys, this Virgo new moon, is happening in your third house on September 2nd. And this can indicate that there may be an important conversation, decision, reality check or event um, that kind of happens that affects you on a mental slash emotional level. And that might not be the case for everybody. So just kind of tune into all the messages because I found that there's been quite a bit of random stuff coming through that it is not totally all the same or connected. So typically that's what we see though with a new moon in the third house is like I've made up my mind around something or I've had some kind of like clarity or revelation or some news. There's this new mental chapter. Saturn is opposite this new moon, which does bring in the potential for like a little bit of lack of faith in a way. Saturn in the ninth has a more cynicism or like cynical type of mindset where we can doubt the practicality, the reality of something. Virgo in the, the third can be very good at getting the practical elements sorted out. But with Saturn in the ninth, we might lack that basic hope and faith in ourselves in the universe that this can be a thing. Um, and often it's because the wind was taken out of our sails for some reason. Something happened to us in the past that creates that sense of uncertainty in ourselves. And Mars is in your 12th, squaring Neptune in your ninth. And there's something going on here with this in particular where I feel like it's something from the past that could or something that you've kind of pushed away and not have fully addressed in your life that is coming up in a way that makes you feel insecure or uncertain or lacking faith in something like I'm not optimistic. I'm pessimistic or I am uncertain that this will ever happen for me and I am questioning it. There's like this sense of kind of like, yeah, like a little bit of a narrow perspective that can come in um, because of fear of being hurt again. And I see that with this 10 of cups in reverse, three of swords upright, something that you thought was your wish coming true being the thing that disappoints you and hurts you. and. I think that this is, again, something that's already happened that is in the back of your subconscious affecting your ability to have faith and believe in the brightness of your future. And I also pulled the, the mouth card, which talks about needing to communicate something really clearly, needing to express your feelings, express your heart voice things and that's a new moon in the third house especially in virgo which is a mercury ruled moon mercury as i said as a ruler is in your second house squaring uranus in the 11th so there may be some unexpected quality to the conversations that you have uh, if you're needing to voice something that it could kind of come out of nowhere it could surprise others or somebody could surprise you with how they react to you um but I think regardless, it needs to be done. It needs to, the the decision, the idea, it could pop out of nowhere, but it, it's important that it comes as it is at the time it comes, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, Mercury in the second can, call, can also indicate a focus on finances as well. So this could be an area that you're thinking about, or this could be one of the areas that you feel less certain about. Um, or where you want to start something new with, but you're not sure how it's going to go. Especially with this square to Uranus in the 11th, it's almost like we need to think about or approach this situation. If, if this is talking about finances, if this, if you're not relating to finances, just you can tune this out, but there may be some unconventional approach to your finances that you can take that will benefit you. Um, and you're maybe not seeing it all right now. 
Mercury in the second is also a lot around. That's so weird. The word anonymity is coming to mind. I don't know where that was coming from, um, especially not in Leo. Leo usually wants to be seen, but I don't know. I don't know if that relates to something, but there's something around um, like autonomy and it maybe that maybe my brain just went to that because they're kind of similar. But the second house is a lot around like I'll do this myself. Um, I'm very independent, self-reliant. I trust myself and I support myself. And with this square to Uranus on the 11th, this might call you to draw in a more community or support element that might feel unusual for you um, or uncomfortable for you in some kind of way. And so, yeah, there's something here. And I feel like it's interesting because we have this four of wands come out, which is about community. It's about coming together, um, often in celebration for you in to create more security or success. And this makes sense with the second house. It's all about security and, and financial success. So there's like the need to draw in other people to that. But then we have the death in reverse, which is a resistance to change, a necessary change. So I almost feel like maybe you guys need other people to create some kind of financial stability or success or get to some goal, but you might resist it. And this could be linked to fear of something that has already happened in the past with other people that make you hesitant about getting into bed, so to speak, uh, with another group of people um, to make something happen. And it's interesting because Venus and the South Node are together in Libra, which does bring up a lot in terms of relationships. So there might be something here where you really need to like talk something out emotionally and let something go in regards to relationships in order to feel like, yes, I can make this right decision and I can get other people's support and I don't have to fear what has happened in the past happening again. I don't know, f for cancers, I just feel like I've been getting so much in regards to relationships and it's kind of not even funny. Um, it can be any kind of relationship. It doesn't have to be just one kind, but the stuff that might come up from the past from you might actually be a lot around family relationships where you start to realize how much you've been influenced by the dynamics that you had growing up. So just some things to consider, but um, yeah, that's the general message for you, my beautiful Cancers. If that resonates, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, and have a beautiful day. Bye. All right, next we have Leo rising and sun. This Virgo new moon that's happening on September 2nd is taking place in your second house of finances. So whenever we're having a new moon, it's a chance for us to have a new beginning. So for you guys, this isn't a time for you to create more financial stability for yourselves, more confidence in yourselves, building up your self-worth, building up your skill set so that you feel like you have a lot to offer when out in the workplace or within relationships with other people. So the second house is this very kind of independent, strong, uh, secure, worthy, financially abundant place that we can be in. And that sounds great, right? But this new moon is opposite Saturn in the eighth. So there is this challenge where we have to face certain um, doubts or insecurities or things from the past because Saturn often brings up things from the past or a need to make a difficult decision or to end something in our life, to walk away from something in our life um, that is getting in the way of that self-worth or security. And I really see that with this Eight of Cups. And this could be walking away from a habit, a an activity, and a relationship. But there's a sense, or a belief, regardless of what it is, you are leaving a situation that is bad for you. You are being courageous in this decision to to understand what will create a sense of serenity and pride in your life. Mercury, the ruler of this new moon is in your first house. So there is a really a, a strong need to build yourself up to 
understand that the decisions that you're making now impact your character, your life direction, your health, and they're not light decisions. So if you're going through something right now, it's important to kind of give yourself grace, but there's something that you might feel like you're kind of stuck in, trapped in, maybe a cycle of some sort, maybe a dynamic of some sort. And with Mercury squaring Uranus in your 10th, this could be career related as well. Maybe you feel stuck in a job, but you are, you're having certain fears about leaving that job or insecurities around not having enough money. And then you make, it makes you feel stuck there, but you want to leave. You want to liberate yourself. That's literally your advice card is liberation. And so I really feel like you're having conflict and this could be with people that you work with, if this is talking about work, um, but there's something that likely involves other people, especially with Mars being in your 11th house right now, squaring Neptune in the eighth. There can be some uncertain dynamics that involve other people where it is kind of taking some of that confidence away from you. And, um, yeah, it's almost like the people you surround yourself with are really impacting you at this time. And I feel like everybody, some stuff is coming up relationally because Venus and the South Node are together in Libra. And so there's something that could come up that you need to have an important conversation or decision around that does involve other people. But there's something going on here where I feel like you're, there are people that could come and kind of undermine your your sense of self-worth or confidence, or maybe you working with somebody isn't working out so well, or a particular goal that you have is getting undermined by you comparing yourself to other people or by what other people say about it. And they're making you uncertain about yourself, but there's something here. Where it's like, you need to get out of a certain situation. Maybe you need to walk away from the dynamic uh, of looking at other people online and compare yourself to them or, of working with a toxic person who doesn't believe in you or give you the independence you need or whatever that looks like. There's something that you have to leave um, that could involve other people. It doesn't have to. That is going to give you the freedom to believe in yourself, build yourself up and create more of that financial security for yourself as well as just stronger self-worth. And I see it ending with this nine of cups, which is, a card about a wish fulfillment, having things work out in your favor, having prosperity, realizing that you're have like the realization of a dream. And so there's something here where I feel like if you are able to get out of whatever you're kind of stuck in, if, if it is a negative habit, if it is a lifestyle or a relationship dynamic or a toxic workplace, whatever this is, it's like, it's eating away at your confidence and your ability to feel se secure and stable and it's affecting your long-term finances it's affecting your well-being and it's time for you to break away from that address the conflict head on so that you can move past it which might be hard with mars square neptune but it's time to liberate yourself from it in any way that you that you can and reach that nine of cups energy which is what's on the other side for you is what you actually want, your wish being fulfilled. So making this sacrifice or this hard decision will be so worth it in the end. I think that's something that you need to hear today because for most people, I just felt called to pull two cards. For you, there was one more and it was that nine of cups. So it's telling you there is a positive outcome after this, but you have to be able to make that important decision first. So I hope this makes sense for what you're going through. If it does, I'd love to hear from you down below. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, and have a beautiful day. If you want a reading from me, check me out at CosmicClarityAstrology.com. And I hope you take care. Bye. All right, up next we have Virgo rising. So, or sun. This new moon is happening in your first house. And this is a time in which we're supposed to have a new leaf turnover in the way that you are as a person. This could look like you deciding to pursue something new, having clarity about something in your life having a, a fresh start in some kind of way. And this could also affect you physically being in the first house of your body. However, Saturn is opposite this moon in the seventh house, which does bring up stuff around relationships. So it's interesting because I did pull the romantic love card and the rib cage, which is all about somebody being 
somebody being more guarded. And so there's this, there's a sense of with Saturn the seventh of relationships being a little bit harder and maybe feeling like you don't trust people as much or having trouble opening up. If you're in a relationship, having trouble connecting and relying on that partner, or if you're single feeling like you're not as emotionally open to meet somebody new, there's a sense of being like closed off, um, kind of thinking that you could get hurt basically. And so there's something going on here with that, where I think this new moon's trying to create, again, a new fresh start where maybe you can overcome that. But Saturn does force us to face it head on. It does kind of force us to make decisions or plan for our long-term future, get clear about really like how relationships fit into our lives. And that doesn't always mean it's easy. Sometimes we have to make difficult decisions um, in order to have success with that. And I can kind of see that with this five of wands upright and wheel of fortune reverse. There's just something that might feel unfavorable here where there is a combative energy. Um, and it's interesting because Mars is in your 10th squaring Neptune in your 7th. So there might be some confusion around how someone fits into your future or how you're going to meet someone for your future or how relationships fit with like the direction you want to go in with your life. But there is this combative energy with the Five of Wands of there's different competing priorities. There are different ideas of what could happen that compete with each other. There are um, differences of opinion. There's a sense of like conflict between various elements and that could take on different forms. With the Wheel of Fortune Reverse, this is kind of like this, this moment, it's not its moment right? The wheel turns where it becomes favorable at the top and then releases energy at the bottom and starts to refresh itself. So there's something here where it's like something might not feel like the right moment or has lost its moment or the concept and pressure of time could be a really important role in this idea of relationships right now. Maybe you're getting older and you're feeling that pressure. Or maybe you've been with someone for a really long time and it's kind of like a low point. Um, or maybe you are having trouble meeting someone because it's like the energy isn't really there. Um, so there's something here around lots of campaigning priorities and they're kind of not, it's not its peak moment right now for maybe romantic love to shine, for example, or for that to be a really strong focus in your life. And Saturn is there, which does indicate that there has, there are still thoughts around it. There's still plans around it. There's still things that you're confronting around that, but it doesn't mean that it's easy or that it's a good time for it or that it's going to just come to you. Does that make sense? With the moon being in your first house, it is, a, it is about you, but there could be relationships that require more of you. Saturn, wherever Saturn is, requires some level of responsibility. In the seventh house, there could be relationships that are asking more of you. But with the moon being in the first, it's your time to shine. And so there, there, there could also be something with that where relationships, it's not, it's not really their time, but they could still be trying to like draw you out or, or get some energy from you or have you do something for them, um, even though this is meant to be your time to kind of focus on yourself but one thing I think that you are needing to have self-awareness around and I can see this with Mercury being the 12th where the 12th is really subconscious and Mercury is the ruler of this moon so there's something in the subconscious that you're meant to kind of dig through and understand especially because the square is Uranus in the ninth so there's some realizations I think you're going to come to about yourself and have greater yeah, just like understanding of this of the self and like the way that you work and why you're doing certain things, the way that you're doing them. And that's what I think this new moon is really about. It's about your self-awareness, especially when it comes to these stressful dynamics with others or relationships or your plans with relationships or the lack of relationships. Um, but there's there is like a guarded energy. I feel like you're kind of giving off this like excuse my French, but like this fuck you vibe. <laughs> and what I mean by that is like, I'm not interested. 
This four of cups is like, I'm not interested. I don't really want to open up. I don't really want to meet someone new. I don't really want to da 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 you know? And this doesn't mean that you don't actually want it, but that's the energy you're giving off. And there might be some undercurrents of subconscious beliefs or fears that are playing into that. And I think this new moon is about really unpacking that, you know, unpacking your understanding of yourself and where you're coming from around relationship stuff. Um, and yeah, I feel like you're, you're, you're in this place like you're like no I don't want that instead I'm going to focus on myself and my money with the nine of pentacles or instead I'm going to focus on my independence or like focus on building this thing up for myself so yeah I feel like if you guys are really drawn to relationship stuff I that need is still there and I think there's some responsibility there as well but I feel like there's almost this this pull back where you're like no but I want to develop more myself I want to focus on this aspect of myself like getting a better workout routine or working on this project that's important that's my priority so I can kind of see them being competing priorities and you saying like mm, to relationships kind of um if you're not if you're really investing into the relationships the message is to focus on yourself the message is to prioritize the things that are important to you because this is a moon in your first house you that doesn't mean to ignore responsibilities of relationships and you know the commitment there but it does mean that there has to be a balance and not letting important things for you fall by the wayside we also have Venus in the South Node and Libra in your second house. And this is for everyone bringing stuff up relationally. And this could also bring that up in regards to different values, different mindsets, different finances. Um, it could affect your finances. There could be something interwoven with that. So stuff from the past in relationships can resurface. And especially when it concerns like, again, your priorities and your values and where you're spending your time or your money. And it's kind of time to reassess that balance and where you're putting your attention and focus and also assessing your energy towards relationships because you can focus on yourself but have more of a welcoming energy when in that relation when in your relationship with others because maybe you are spending time with your partner or your friend or whatever but maybe you just have this weird energy where you're like yeah just like not trusting people and really closed off and really that fuck you energy that I'm talking about. And it's this new moon might have you, again, need to work on yourself. Yes, focus on yourself, but also work on that. Like, why do you have that weird energy? How can you get rid of that? Because that's not serving you. Even if you don't want to put all your energy into relationships, you don't want to approach relationships like that because the whatever energy you are putting into it, if it's bad energy, uh, even if it's, a large quantity or a little quantity it's it's gonna come out as bad taste in, in the other person's mouth so hope that makes sense for you guys if it does i would love to hear from you in the comments down below please don't forget to give me a thumbs up subscribe share with your friends and if you want a reading from me you can always check out my readings at cosmicclarityastrology.com which i will link in the sort of description box down below thanks guys bye all right up next we have libra rising and sun this virgo new moon happening on september 2nd is taking place in your 12th house which is a house associated with rest with sleep with endings and there's a lot in the cards that are coming out that mirror that message but almost like an ending of the rest and i'll get into what i mean about that in a second this new moon is a chance for us to reconnect to Virgo energy, which is an earth sign getting down to kind of the the plan, the practical matters, observing our reality and, and what we are putting into our day-to-day -day life to get the results that we're getting on a physical level with health as well as with work. And this new moon is opposite Saturn in your sixth house. Saturn is, especially in the sixth, is very work-oriented and this axis in general has a lot to deal with mental and physical health. So there could be really strong themes that come up in regards to either uh, any of those three things, work, health, and your mental health as well. And so there could be some realizations that you guys have around new 
things that you want to start. Um, and that's kind of what I'm seeing is like this end of maybe a rest period where, because Saturn has a lot to do with endings. And when it's involved in a moon like this, in such a hard aspect, it's often like asking us to maybe make a difficult decision or again, have some kind of ending or finality or commitment to something. And I see that for you guys in the sense that I feel like you're coming out of this like phase of maybe of resting or overthinking or, you know, planning. Like there's this, there's this feeling of like, I'm kind of cloistered away with the four swords in reverse and the followed by the fool card. It's like, you guys are coming out of maybe a period of recovery or like disconnection socially. Um, or maybe you were resting on your goals and you weren't like moving something forward in your life. And it's like, you're coming out of that phase of, yeah, that phase with this new moon and you're starting to have a little bit of this kind of this fool energy of um, having a new start, having a fresh leaf be turned over. But with this being a new moon in the 12th, you really have to, it's like, I feel like it's a chapter marker where you are, you went through a journey and then you took a rest and now you are having your beginning, but you can't just go out in the same way. You have to likely give up something or end something or retire something in order to kind of move into the next phase of your existence in a, in a lighter way, but also in a more like aligned way. And I really see that with this death and magic card. There's something that I feel like wants to end that wants to die off in order to create the magic for the new beginning. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely feel like you guys are going to be coming, going to be becoming more social. Uh, Venus is in your sign right now, which attracts relationships to you, but it's with the South node in your first house. So there's definitely, again, some element here of like needing to let something go. The South node is very concerned with things from the past and it can bring stuff back up as can Saturn, which is opposite this new moon. So there's some stuff from the past that can sometimes come back up. And especially when it comes to you and like your appearance, your health, your people pleasing tendencies, whatever that is, um, Venus and the South Node in your sign are indicating the need to maybe kind of reassess your values, your relationships, the way that you've approached, I guess, making balance, like making peace and harmony and balance in your life. And ask yourself if there's a different way of relating or a different way of finding that balance or a different priority that you need to have as you embark on this more enlivened journey. Um, not to say that you weren't enlivened, but I feel like there was something that you weren't engaging with as much. Like maybe you took a long vacation or maybe you took a break from hanging out with people as much. Or maybe you were, I don't know, at a meditation retreat. There's like this energy of kind of like retreat and not being, not trying to move forward as much with maybe something significant in your life. And I see that phase coming to an end with this new moon. And I think it's because you're having maybe like even a spiritual awakening in some senses. You know, I think we have many little spiritual awakenings, but whenever we have a new moon on 12th, we're really spiritually connected. So there's some kind of information that you might get, or some, you know, enlightenment that you might get in order to help you realize what you're ready to embark on um, differently this time. The ruler of this new moon is Mercury, which is in your 11th, squaring Uranus in your 8th. So this definitely brings up stuff in relationships. And again, Venus in the south node in your sign does as well. So there may be some things that you kind of need to get out of um, relationally or yeah, especially with this square to Uranus in the 8th, this does kind of bring up the need to have some type of ending or change in the way that you are with people. Um, I feel like I need to pull a card for this. And this could be with yourself as well. This doesn't just have to be relationally. But I did get the Queen of Swords in reverse. And the Queen of Swords, it's kind of a, yeah, it has like um a bitchy quality to it upright and reverse but then when it's in reverse it's not expressing itself as confidently it's kind of coming out in this like you know i i'm 
I'm not maybe setting clear boundaries with someone. I'm maybe um, frustrated with things that I haven't communicated really well. Maybe there are difficult traumas and relationships and things that I've kind of repressed that I haven't acknowledged and it's affecting my relationships. Um, and it can come out as like feeling a little bit critical, feeling a little bit like nitpicky in relationship with others or with yourself. And so I feel like some of you guys maybe have been in kind of like this phase of, again, retreat and a little bit of disengagement from something in your life. And in that process may have felt a little bit like you're kind of contending with this Queen of Swords energy that I just described, maybe being a little bit hard on yourself or hard on your partner, or hard on a friend or uncertain around where you stand with someone or something and like what you what decisions do you want to make with that? And with Mercury in the 11th squaring Uranus in the 8th, I really feel like it's your time to be confident and much more expressive and decisive. And maybe you, you'll even surprise people with your forwardness um, and your honesty. The skin. Yeah, the skin is all about boundaries. So you may have some unspoken boundaries that you really need to clarify and not just with yourself but with others so this might not always involve others but usually it does after the queen of swords in reverse we have the six of six of wands so there's something here where it's like i am i am ready now to let go of this maybe resentment or this pessimism or this like coldness and i'm ready to speak my mind and like take up space and ask to be given what I want and to be recognized for what I have to offer and for people to value me. It's like, it's like somebody who's wanting to really feel that reciprocation in relationships or to feel like the efforts that they're putting into their friendships or their work is getting the accolades or the respect it deserves. There's something here. It's like the boundaries, I think, there was maybe some unspoken boundaries or things that you needed to come to terms with um, that were affecting you emotionally and it was kind of like building and building and then I see you addressing it at this new moon because the 12th house often has to deal with things that are repressed or that are secret secrets in our life or that undermine us by not being addressed and I really can see with the Saturn opposition that it's going to force you to like face this or to address this and let this energy out so that you can embody more of your public persona, your, again, your confident self, the part of you that feels like it deserves recognition. Um, there's like parts of you that I think haven't gotten an, enough recognition and it can lead to that kind of like stewing energy, which is very classic for uh, planets in the eighth house, which is where your Uranus is. So that's generally what I'm seeing for you guys. Let me just, there's one more thing. You guys have, also have Mars in the ninth and Gemini squaring Neptune in the sixth. So um, I'm curious right now, like usually Mars in the ninth, it can create this drive for adventure. Uh, the, the ninth house is very adventurous. It's really often associated with traveling and Mars is adventurous too. So you can kind of combine these energies and I see this like a desire for adventure, but then it's squaring this Neptune in the sixth house and again, Saturn's in your sixth house. So there might be some like a desire for growth and expansion and newness and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and um, leading in some way or going to new places. I can see you guys wanting to have that, but then I feel like because there's still this level of um, like the responsibility or ends that haven't been fully tied up or things that haven't been clarified that in your work life or in your health or with your relationships, it's like affecting your day-to-day -day life. And that might kind of throw that sense of expansion and optimism and venturousness. It might throw it through a, for a loop for, let me know in the comments down below what that saying is um so 
I think that once you address this, it's going to help you again, really move out and be seen, be confident, try new stuff, be adventurous, everything that I was mentioning before. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra. I would love to know if this resonates with you in the comments down below. And if you want a reading, reading from me, you can check me out at cosmicclarityastrology.com, which I always link in the description. Uh, the other signs are going to be linked there as well. And if you enjoyed this, please do subscribe, like the video, share with your friends and have a beautiful day. Bye. All right, up next we have Scorpio rising and sun. This Virgo new moon is taking place in your 11th house of friendships, which does give you the potential to have some kind of new leaf to turn over in the area of your relationships. This could also pertain to certain long-term goals. And I really feel that this is likely going to be kind of a toss up for those who are watching this, how it affects you. So we're going to go into what this means. So this new moon is opposite Saturn in your fifth. So whenever we have a new moon opposite Saturn, there's usually some kind of thing that we have to face that we have to overcome, maybe a hard decision that we have to make or a, an ending that we have to face. Um, but there's, there's this idea of like, we're reaching some kind of critical mass point where we can't go on with something. And I really see that with the nine of wands upright. I feel like there's been something ongoing with you in relation to, you know, somebody in your life or a group of friends in your life or uh, a goal that you have, um, and something that you've been working towards. There's something that I think has been, um, like, um, challenging, tiring, like you're kind of growing weary a little bit with whatever this thing is. And this opposition with Saturn in the fifth is kind of there to get you to that peak point of having to make again, a difficult decision or confront something or decide something or uh, overcome something in order to get out of maybe a phase of feeling like you're, yeah, like tr you're just frustrated or like trudging along and um, the same issues pop up or you feel like you were making progress, but now you're not so sure. There's something in regards to that with, with either a relationship or with an endeavor that you're on that I think you're having to again do something about um to face to face it to get past that like problem that's ongoing or this feeling that's ongoing um and for it's weird because i'm really seeing both career and relationships here and one of the reasons is because mercury the ruler of this new moon is in your 10th house and it's squaring uranus in your seventh house so um there could be something in regards to there being some surprising things that happen within relationships unexpected things that kind of come out of the blue that you have to address with people in order to know how you're going to move forward and in, in the sense of direction that you have together there could be a clash between elements of your your future and your goals and your career and your relationships and where they are at um, you could have weird dynamics with people in the workplace uh, you could have certain things that you're just struggling with basically um, and to some degree that has been ongoing so if this is something that's like popping up out of nowhere that's probably not what I'm talking about this feels like it's been going on for a second and you're like, okay, okay, I've had enough of this. Um, and I can really see that with this temperance in reverse. This is usually a card when upright where you have this kind of sense of stability and peace and you are filling up your cup and relationships might be patient and, and balanced. But when it's in reverse, there's a sense of imbalance. And I also pulled the justice in reverse, which is also about imbalance or unfairness. So there's really this repeating message around like people not seeing eye to eye with something and um, this, yeah, the clash of like wills or clash of perspectives and things being unfair in the relationship or um, or things happening that feel like sudden and they rock the boat in regards to the relationship. If this is a goal, this is like you are trying to move forward with something, but maybe you feel like you're getting held back and there is an unfairness in that, for example, where you feel like you are taking the steps and doing things, but you're not getting 
kind of the retribution or the right reaction to things. So I feel like what has been happening is it's been building up an animosity for you guys with this liver. Um, in, in traditional Chinese medicine, they say that the liver stores quite a bit of like repressed rage or yeah, just unprocessed anger. And so I think that with you guys, with having Mars, which is your planetary ruler, moving through your eighth house, there's probably some more difficult emotions that you are needing to address at this time. And this feels kind of karmic because Venus and the South Node are together in Libra in your 12th house, which is a very karmic house. And so there might be something here that's like, not from this lifetime that has longer roots to it. That's really a vibe I was getting with this not being coming out of nowhere. This is something, there might be an element of this that comes out of nowhere where someone says something unexpected or does something unexpected, but it's rooted in from an issue that has been going on for some time or it's been, yeah, like there's something going on in a relationship that's been strenuous and then it's just like another thing or you feel like you've been trying to make progress on this path for so long and then just another hiccup happens. So there's a sense of frustration that can come from that. And I really feel like this new moon is about addressing that head on with Scorp or with Saturn being in the fifth. Um, and Saturn is kind of the lesson here. There is something about with the fifth house where we are, I feel like really true to ourselves and we are not... Yeah, there's an authenticity piece, um, a connection to your heart, a a piece around doing the thing that brings you like joy or lightness or peace. The fifth house is representative of the things that bring us joy. So yeah, I feel like whatever has been getting in the way of your peace right now when it comes to likely a relationship or some kind of career path where you felt like it was imbalanced or unfair, it's like you have to do the thing to release that anger, release that resentment and bring about that sense of peace again. So that's your message. Um, let me just see if there's any final card that Spirit wants for you. Is there any final card, Spirit, that you want for Scorpio? So I got new beginnings. So there's something that I feel like is in the works for you guys. And there is an, a resetting that's happening here. And oftentimes, you know, with Venus and South Node in your 12th, there can be an ending that precipitates that new beginning. So, you know, you addressing something with someone and not tolerating it anymore, or you making a decision to kind of alter your path in some way to to not have to continue with this cycle or like this frustration or you just even voicing how you feel alone could be enough where you're having that release, that closure, and then having a new beginning with this thing that you are engaged with. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. I hope that resonates. I hope that makes sense for you. If it does, or even if it doesn't, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you want a reading from me, you can always check that out at CosmicClarityAstrology.com, which I link in the description box along with all of the other signs. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, and have a beautiful day. Bye. All right, I'm next to have Sagittarius rising and sun. This new moon in Virgo on the second is happening in your 10th house. So this is a new opportunity for some type of rebirth through your career or your goals or your relationship with people who are maybe in like an authority figure for you or a teacher for you of some sort or even a governmental agency or people at work. Um, it's a time to have like a kind of new leaf start over a rebirth in your career path or within those relationships if it's talking about relationships for you. This new moon is making an opposition to Saturn in your fourth house. This does bring about somewhat of a challenge. Saturn in the fourth is, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it can bring up a lot um, emotionally because Saturn, Saturn tends to bring a certain amount of challenge to a situation. Um, it asks us to make maybe a hard decision or end something in our life or, um, yeah, face something from our past or address an underlying issue that we've kind of ignored. And then the fourth house is such a sensitive house that I feel like whatever this is talking about is definitely it has emotional ties. So um, 
yeah, I almost feel like this is bringing up something from your childhood where you're having to, maybe you're, you're kind of trying to like advance something in your career or in your career relationships, or you're trying to improve your life in some way. But I get the sense of like having to contend with your past, where you come, come from, how you were influenced, how you were molded as a child and your environment and, and having to kind of make the decision of like, well, I'm not going to be like my parents or I'm not going to relive this thing that I've struggled with and I'm going to overcome this kind of cycle. Um, and I really feel like, yeah, I really feel like there's something going on here with that. Mercury is in your ninth house, which is the ruler of this new moon. It's in the sign of Leo and it's squaring Uranus in your sixth. So there's something here that's you know, whenever we have Mercury and Leonis or Mercury and Uranus in the square, there's something here that can come like unexpectedly. So having an unexpected idea or communication with somebody or an event that happens and it kind of like wakes you up out of a slumber, um, especially with Mercury in the ninth, it's like it, it makes you aware of something, maybe like the the larger context of something, the bigger picture of something, how this relates to something else. Um, and with that square to Uranus in the six, I really feel like it's trying to, that, that awareness is trying to also instigate some level of change in your day-to-day -day life. The sixth house is like the practical functionality of our day-to-day -day life. And this is a Virgo new moon, which has similar themes to it. Concern with how we make plans, concern with how we take care of our health, what time we go to bed, what work we're doing or what boundaries we have in our work relationships, what roles we have as maybe a leader or a follower. And there's some kind of shift here that I think is trying to happen for you. Um, it could be a relational shift again within the workplace or um, something a little bit more practical, less social. Um, so it's going to kind of depend on the person. But I definitely see that you guys are having some kind of like realization and I feel like there's something here with this rebirth card and with some of the other cards that I pulled where it's a lot about like having the courage to leave a difficult situation having the courage or the self-confidence to um, like put your foot down and feel like I am like I'm not going to tolerate this anymore I'm worthy of more something like this is going on um, and I can see that because I pulled the seven of swords in reverse and this is like this is I feel like something the truth coming out or the like when it's upright it's somebody who is sneaky who is cheating who's stealing who's you know whatever um in reverse it can still be like that where people might be taking credit for something that you do or they are just not trustworthy or um, yeah, there are secrets and things that are happening. Um, but when it's in reverse, it can also indicate that things are coming to light, that there is a confession, there's a coming clean, like releasing any guilt on your conscious. Um, this could be related to you or someone else in your life, but there's some kind of like, I feel that there is some sticky, sticky energy or sticky situation, um, where, there's, yeah, there could, this could be relational or this could be something just going on with you where maybe there's something that you want to share. Um, maybe there's something that somebody else wants to share with you, but it's like, it feels like we're kind of like airing things out. We're getting, we're facing the truth of something. We're seeing something clearly and having the courage with the strength and the eight of cups to walk away, having the courage to like not engage in a pattern anymore. Um, so this, if this is talking about Saturn in the fourth house, there could be something in regards to your family where there's this like reoccurring thing. That's a theme that's been going on that you haven't always seen, or you haven't always addressed. And then it comes to light and you're like, well, I don't want to continue that pattern. Um, I want to, release myself from this I want to like face the truth and have the courage to make a difficult decision to end whatever this is or find what the truth is in the situation or leave a bad situation um, and have like the emotional strength 
to believe in yourself that you are capable of more of something different. Um, and I, I am curious if this involves other people because you do have Mars in the seventh house, which definitely does draw a lot of energy to relationships and connections and how people understand one another. And Mars is unfortunately making this square to Neptune in the fourth, which can create a bit of kind of like a confusion or a lack of confidence in oneself and, and their sense of direction. So there could be a little bit of that energy coming through relationally where you kind of question yourself and you're like, well, am I right about this or am I not? Like, it's kind of like, is this person gaslighting me or like, what's really true here? And, um, you know, what direction should I go in? And maybe not feeling super confident in your decisions or in what you're thinking about. And if this doesn't resonate with you, just know that this is likely not aspecting your chart, you know, personally, like it might not be hitting a planet. So not every new and full moon is going to have these kind of meanings for us because they're not always going to be hitting personal plans. Um, but I see this, this energy with this wise leadership card where you guys are meant to be coming out like on top meant, to, this is a new moon in the 10th, which is a house of visibility and leadership. So this is really not about you kind of like passively letting somebody else lead you astray or, um, convince you of something or take you in a certain direction. This is about you knowing what you want, knowing who you are, knowing where you want to go and like taking your ownership back, knowing what your truth is and setting out on that path um, with conviction and, and having such conviction that you're able to lead others as well or having that confidence that you're not only leading yourself, but you're impacting others. Um, and there, there may, yeah, this kind of following energy, I feel like is meant to be left with Venus in the South Node and Libra on the 11th. It's like, oh, I'll just do what you say and we'll just go along with the group. And if everyone's going, then I should go. Or if everyone thinks this, then I should think this. It's like, there's this, there's a need to, wherever the South Node is, there's a need to release something around that. So it's like, maybe if there's a pattern around that, if there's people pleasing or a tendency to like give into something or to allow yourself to become confused um, or yeah, I think that this is their time to kind of to break out of that basically. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Sagittarius. Um, let me pull one more card. I feel called to, so let's just see what's up. I got the pelvis. So let's see what that means. The pelvis, stability, intimacy, and emotional instability. Experiencing the effects of trapped emotional energy and emotional instability, turn your attention inwards and begin to acknowledge buried feelings, emotions that arose in reaction to a past traumatic experience. That's kind of the vibe that I was getting with this Saturn in the fourth house is like, there's some stuff that might be going on that is coming from like our, our, our lineage, our childhood, our trauma, our past experiences. And it's like, we're good. It's getting us like stuck in something. A significant event or major life stress have become fixed. You must process and release residual feelings to restore emotional balance. So having the courage to walk away from something, having the courage to feel and process something, release it and get unstuck. That is your message, Sagittarius. If you want a reading from me, check me out at CosmicClarityAstrology.com, which I will link in the description box down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, and have a beautiful day. All right, next we have Capricorn rising and sun. So this Virgo new moon on September 2nd is taking place in your ninth house, which is a time where I feel like you guys are here to reset your perspective, reset your beliefs, your faith, your sense of direction. The ninth house is kind of like a compass that points north towards our future and guides us around what we are meant to accomplish, what we are meant to become and have the faith in our self-actualization and potential. And I really see that this is a new leaf turning over here for you guys. However, there is a little bit of a reckoning that's having to happen in order for this to take place for everyone, but also for you guys, because Saturn is opposite this new moon in your third house. So there can be some things going on where you are having a lot of like transition in your life. And I really see that with this tower and the six of swords. It just feels like very unstable, unsteady ground, um, uncertain around where you're at, where you're going. 
you have a sense of direction, but I feel like there's a lot in flux so that it's, it's not like the cement has not hardened. It's still really uncertain what that mold is going to harden into. And so there's, it feels like, yeah, a lot in flux, maybe a lot of like decisions that you have to make right now, or maybe you're traveling a lot and you're not at home, but there's this feeling of like things being in upheaval, things being in transition, things being uncertain, and maybe a big change in your life led you to a new path and moving towards calmer waters, but it feels like things are still kind of like mildly shaken up in your life, um, and we're waiting to see where the dust settles, and relationally I feel like you guys are definitely having some kind of like reality check when it comes to the people that are in your life and I think this has to deal with the fact that Mercury the ruler of this new moon is in your eighth house which is a very sensitive and relationship oriented house um and yeah I almost wonder if it brings up like a bit of your insecurities because you are in this state of transition and there is quite a bit that might be happening again in your relationships with the three of cups in reverse it's like oh i feel maybe disconnected from people or i feel maybe that um yeah like people are canceling plans or I thought that I was really excited about this one thing to do with this one person, but it fell through. And now I kind of like don't have that, that joy, um, that thing to look forward to. And with the seven of cups in reverse, it's like, I don't know, there might be, there might be some way in which you are realizing the reality of your situation. This could be that you are realizing like, oh, this person doesn't care about me that much or I am self-inflicting this by isolating myself or I, I don't believe in myself enough. My insecurities are coming out and that's why I missed this really great opportunity. There's something here where I feel like you're seeing the reality. You're seeing your involvement, their involvement, the situation's involvement, and you're kind of like looking at why things have fallen through the cracks or have felt disappointed disappointing um in regards to maybe a person or situation and this mercury in the eighth squaring uranus in the fifth can represent again that instability mercury square uranus is extremely unexpected unstable and the fifth house is really where we're grounded into who we are we are confident about who we are what we have to offer we feel like we are able to pursue the things that make us unique and make us shine um, but with this Mercury in the eighth, it's like it can block that through, again, fears or insecurities or a crisis or trauma or kind of unexpected things come up that get in the way of your ability to maybe connect on a heart level with others or um, jump on these opportunities that you shouldn't miss. And I feel like that's, again, this kind of points back to a lot of things being maybe in flux in your life and you kind of needing to like orient yourself to that true north which is why this new moon is in your ninth house you also have mars and gemini in your sixth house and it's squaring neptune in your third so i don't know i just feel like this for everybody gives this kind of like lack of confidence or um confusion around our sense of direction and i really feel like you guys just have a lot of like a lot going on maybe mentally again a lot in flux and change that it's kind of hard to get really grounded and understand this is my schedule this is what i'm doing each day this is what i'm doing for my health because i feel like maybe you're so busy or you're super distracted or you're so uncertain about have like you can't have a routine when you are moving or traveling or doing something big like that so i'm just getting this sense of like of life is so unstable that it's that that's also kind of contributing to maybe like a nervousness or a depletion of energy or an overthinking um, that can happen as a result of this transition in your life. You also have Venus in the South Node in Libra in your 10th house. So there, again, I really feel like there's something going on here for you guys where you're needing to like come to terms with something especially when it comes to like your future and your goals because the 10th house is like okay what are my goals what are my accomplishments what am I trying to achieve with my life and my reputation and my presence in this world and um 
what success do I want to have? And with Venus and the South Node together here, there's like a really, uh, maybe a total reevaluation of what your goals are, of what your priorities are, of what you value and, you know, what you're looking for in your career. And you might have to face some old energy there, um, potentially with like bosses or people in your life that are authorities. You might have to like face some old energy there and address it and, yeah, realize that there's a, a shift that's kind of being made here for you. This is what is going to adjust your compass because if you're reassessing your values and you're establishing that you believe different things or you want different things for yourself, your true north is going to change and, and what you do will ultimately change. Um, and so I kind of feel like there's this is just representative of a bigger thing happening for you guys. The rib cage. I also pulled this, which really relates to Mercury being in your eighth house. You're emotionally guarded. You may find that you have difficulty opening up. Previous experience has taught you that you need to be prepared and defend yourself and your emotions against external attack. While being cautious is sensible, don't allow skepticism and mistrust to get in the way of making real human connection. And that was something I was seeing. I don't think it's just about connection, although I do think that that's something I see with this three of cups in reverse, seven of cups in reverse is like, this kind of cynicism that can happen around, you know, what you believe in relationships. And so um, feeling like, and, and again, that with Mercury in the eighth square and Uranus in the fifth, you can realize that like some of your own trauma and insecurities make you defensive or make you recoil and retract from social situations or opportunities to meet people or connect with people in a way. Um, and it's like, you're kind of more guarded. And so this is a time when with, the, with this new moon in the ninth, where you're trying to reestablish again, your, your North node, your sense of your North node, your, your true North, your sense of direction, this pertains to relationships too. Like, what do I want to believe about people and about my ability to connect and, um, you know, like what kind of relationships I want to have? I feel like you got, you're, re you're really establishing different sets of priorities, values, perspectives in order to advance your life. And you kind of have to contend with this uncertainty maybe or instability around current relationships or uncertainty or instability around different areas of your life. And all those things are going to affect you. So kind of a lot going on for you right now, Capricorn, but I hope this resonates. If it does and you want a reading from me, you can always check me out at CosmicClarityAstrology.com, which I link in the description box down below. If you enjoy this, please do comment down below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, and have a beautiful day. Bye. All right, it makes you have Aquarius rising and sun. This Virgo new moon happening on September 2nd is taking place in your eighth house. And this is a new moon in which I really feel like we are all having to kind of contend with something. We're having to address something, face something, make a decision about something. And with Sa with this new moon opposite Saturn, um, this is why I'm saying all this because Saturn has us do that. Um, Saturn is also a planet that clarifies, solidifies, and creates boundaries. And I really feel like there's something here going on for you guys where you are needing to maybe get out of some kind of pattern, especially in relationships, and set necessary boundaries, be able to say no and stand up for yourself in some important way. I also feel like, um, maybe not stand up for yourself, but there is, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna leave that. <laughs> um, but there's something here where I pulled the high priestess in reverse and I really feel like you guys are not listening to your intuition about something. This is a very strong message that came to me with this high priestess in reverse and it's trying to say that you, there's something emotionally that you guys are experiencing that I think that you are not fully trusting your intuition about, especially if it comes to another person um, if it involves another person in some way it doesn't have to but this very much can um, another side message is with this new moon being in the eighth and Saturn being in the second there can be also some financial things that you guys are having to come to terms with and kind of get a hold of basically um, yes but I really feel like for a lot of you guys it's more relational and that's because Mercury, the ruler of this new moon, is in your seventh house of relationships, and it's squaring Uranus in your fourth house. And the the fourth house is all about how we feel, and what we are, what's going on inside of us, basically. So with this, with the ruler of this new moon in the seventh squaring Uranus in the fourth, there's some kind of emotional 
like explosion or release that needs to happen, I feel in some instances. And I really see that with this 10 of wands and reverse fall by the queen of cups. It's like you really need to lay down the burden of this. Um, and this could be having some kind of breakdown, having um, getting to a point where you're able to finally say no, no more of this. I'm going to release this emotional burden or this physical burden. Um, I'm going to let something go and tap into this queen of cups, which is being in tune with how I feel, recognizing how I feel, trusting my emotions and my intuition. With the high priestess in reverse, I really feel like there have been signs, there have been synchronicities, there have been things trying to push you out of some kind of stuck pattern. And I feel like you've been kind of, yeah, like the 10 of ones can be like beating a dead horse. Like I'm not willing to let this go. I'm not willing to give this up. And I feel like this is the universe is tr continuously trying to give this message to you of like, it's time, it's time to let go. It's time to move out of the situation. It's time to set a boundary. It's time to express how you feel about something, but you keep like re-engaging with it. And with this Mercury in the seventh, squaring Uranus in the fourth, it's like it reaches a crescendo. It explodes out of you or some unexpected conversation happens or some unexpected information is shared or um, a realization is had. But there's something here where it's like, it can't go on like this. And this is a, a similar message to a lot of the other signs. I think Leo, or was it, I don't remember, Libra. Um, similar message, but are kind of these patterns of things that have been going on for too long. And that's typical when Saturn's involved, especially Saturn the second. Saturn, the second house has a lot to deal with holding on. And Saturn also is a planet very associated with the past. So there is like a kind of tight holding on of like, I'm going to do what I've always done, what I know, what I'm comfortable with. And this Mercury squaring Uranus in the fourth is like, get outside of that pattern, get outside that comfort zone, like shake yourself free um, and it, crack yourself open. It feels like you guys need to have like a big emotional release. With this new moon in the eighth house, it's like you need to like feel raw, to feel exposed, to let things out. And then you need to have the necessary boundaries in place after that to ensure that you're safe. Um, and I see that with this skin card. It's like, you know, you have to first, like the, the skin, it sweats and water in astrology is representative of emotions. And so when you're sweating out of your skin, it's like you're releasing toxic emotions, things that have been building up inside of you. But the skin also protects you from the water in your body or your emotions or your inner world from being exposed to the outside world and being hurt, basically. So there's a need to both release, but also have that necessary retention. And there's a balance there where you have protective layers, you have that strong no, but then you're also addressing things and feeling things and opening up at the right moments. And there is, again, a balance here with all of that that creates this kind of healthy ecosystem of the body. And that's the same for our healthy ecosystem of our emotional nature. And I think that's something that you guys are needing to confront at this time. And you have also Mars in the fifth squaring Neptune in the second. So I really feel like you guys with Mars in the fifth, you Mars in the fifth can be really fun. It can be exciting. It's like, okay, I feel maybe more like inspired by my hobbies right now, or I'm socializing more, or I'm more confident than usual. That's what usually Mars in the fifth is about, but it's squaring Neptune in the second. So there's something about you guys holding on with this Saturn in the, in the second as well, this energy of holding on or staying within your like protective bubble or um, yeah, like trying to do everything on your own or whatever this is, there's some kind of energy of like retaining too much, holding on too much, holding back too much, not being willing to let something out or let something go. Um, there's something with that that I think is disrupting your ability to feel that Mars in the fifth, to feel that kind of confidence and that sexiness and that inspiration. Um, though Mars square Neptune can be very creatively inspiring. So I do encourage you to, you know, pursue more of that. But in general, I think it can, um, yeah, it can create, um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, you have also Venus in the South Node and Libra in your ninth house. So this is a time when Venus and the South Node come together where we're having to kind of like leave 
some issue at the front door when it comes to relationships. Um, the south node is all about letting something go, having the past resurface so that we can let it go and release it or look at it through new eyes. And I really see that for you being in the ninth house. There's some kind of shift in perspective around relationships that I think you're meant to have at this time. And so, yeah, that's what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius. There's some burden that you just need to let go of. You really, you need to emotionally release something. And I think that, the more that you kind of hold on for a dear life for security, the more you are blocking the flow of energy um, and the things that want to come to you. So that's what I see for you. If that resonates, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. If you want to read for me, check me out at CosmicClarityAstrology.com, which I link in the description box down below. And I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, I'm next to have Pisces and Pisces rising. So for you guys, this new moon in Virgo happening on the second is taking place in your seventh house of relationships. And I see a few different messages for you guys. Um, but one of them with a new moon in your seventh is going to be about a new leaf turning over in your relationship area. This is going to create a little bit more stability in your life. However, this new moon is opposite Saturn in your first house. So there is a little bit of this energy of you having to get your ish together first. And I really see that for you um, with this 10 of swords and the queen of pentacles in reverse. I feel like if you were in this energy of being um, disorganized or impractical or not having your material reality together in your life in any way, whether that's financial, your work, your place of living, whatever it is, your routine, there's something about your order in your life that I think has been you know, you're Pisces, that's not always the easiest thing. So there may be like a shift in your schedule or something that changed in your life. And then it's like everything becomes a little bit chaotic. Well, this new moon is a time for you to have, like to create that order back in your life again. And um, to create that, that system or the routine or whatever it is that you need, which is super common for Virgo. Virgos, Virgos are good at that. They're really good at creating that, that, um, that organization and I see you guys doing that I see, with this neuron card I see you guys getting better at communicating getting more efficient um and I think the again being really kind of organized and on top of it in your own life and that will translate into your relationships once you have your own ish together it's like you have a lot more maybe peace or stability or whatever in your relationships that that make it um just improved. And so I'm seeing things becoming better for you guys. And honestly, this is a little bit of a kind of tough new moon in the sense that we have to be responsible or make hard decisions or end something. But I really feel like you guys are getting the goodness out of this new moon. Um, yeah. So the ruler of this moon is Mercury, which is in your sixth house and is squaring Uranus in the third. So again, I really feel like there's quite a bit in your life that's maybe been going through this process of a fluctuation where you're trying to kind of land and find your routine or find your best way to take care of your health or the best kind of work and life balance. But there's something going on here where there's a little bit of like, um, a little bit of chaos thrown in to reestablish what that consistency or that organization should look like. It's like I have to make changes because of the way that my life has unfolded recently um, or these new ideas that I have or these new relationships that I've made and I have to kind of re-solidify things in a new light and that is again going to create a lot more stability in your connection with others. And I see that with this lovers and the empress, it's like a time of abundance, a time of understanding, of clearing up communication, really getting both people on the same page. So if this involves a partner, you and your partner working together to maybe create this solid foundation and not just you, but I think it, it, it starts with you. It always starts with you. Um, but yeah, there's a sense of like camaraderie, understanding coming together. Um, it is possible that some people, I guess, during a time like this could end a relationship that is definitely possible that you could have surprising news around relationships shifting or ending um so i should say that that's a potential as well but i feel like for most of you it is going to be about 
getting things really together in your life and that stabilizing the relationship. But you first have to overcome the hurdle of the of the the flux of the energy that's in flux basically. You also have Mars in the 4th squaring Neptune in the 1st. So um so yeah, again with wherever Mars is is where there's quite a bit of energy or motivation. So this is a, probably a really good time to clear things up in terms of your living situation. Um the the 4th house is our home, it's our relationship with our family. So there could be something here where you maybe need to clean and get organized or you need to get just like part of your ish together is going to be around your home environment. Um, and that's where you should expend some of your energy. And with the squaring up to in the first, I kind of feel like there's, again, still this sense of maybe like a loss of direction where it's like, well, how, where am I going to live? Or how do I want this to look? Or how, what do I want to throw away? Or maybe I, I'm confused about my sense of direction in certain senses and it impacts the way that you make decisions um, within your home or your emotions. And so, yeah, I think what I would recommend is to try to trust your intuition, trust what you're inspired to do or to make changes with and start with the material world. So start with your physical objects around you, your environment around you and make changes that feel really good intuitively to you um, with that. You guys also have Venus in the South Node and Libra in the eighth. If this was a relationship ending, that would be probably an indicator of that. Um, but regardless, this is usually, this is usually like issues coming up from the past when we have the South Node and the Eighth House involved. Um, emotional things that could feel like, oh, I, I'm surprised this is resurfacing. So there could be relational things that you're having to address with somebody in order to, again, stabilize your partnership, which I think is the ultimate goal of this new moon but you have to get your life in order. And that also means your emotional life in order as well. If you have baggage, if you have things that you're carrying forward with you, it's important that you kind of be willing to address that with somebody and let that go. So ultimately, I think that this is a time of um, release and organization in order to create this kind of new leaf within your relationships. I also pulled this nurture and the past. So yeah, I think that there's a lot around like how we love ourselves, how we are loved, how we are taken care of and how our relationships play a role in that and the past and our family and how that was all represented for us. Those things are the kinds of things that can resurface right now where, you know, if you felt like you were always neglected or if you felt like there was a trouble communicating about things or if you were never allowed to be angry growing up, like those things can kind of come back up. These are just random examples. There could be anything, but those things can come back up to help you realize like where you need to better nurture and love yourself and how that translates then into your relationships with others. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. I hope that resonated. If it does, please comment down below or if it doesn't, that's fine too. Um, if you want a reading for me, check me out at cosmicclarityastrology.com, which I will link in the description box down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends and have a beautiful day. Bye.